about trusting in God and why we can trust God. Uh, God knows everything we are going through at the very moment and everything that we'll go through in the future. He knows the best way to handle every situation so we get the best possible outcome. And we need to trust with, uh, him with that. We need to follow his path and trust that he knows best because he does. We're thinking, why can we trust in God? Because he's God, because he's the creator. Uh, we trust God because he's eternal. We can trust God because he's all-powerful. We can trust God because of the things he can't do, like God cannot lie, he cannot act outside of love. We trust God because he is holy. God is one perfect in goodness and righteousness. And then today I want us to think about we can trust God because he wants to give us his kingdom. We can trust God because he wants to give us his kingdom. Luke 12 and 32 says, So don't be afraid, little flock, for it gives your father great pleasure or happiness to give you the kingdom. It's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to be worthy of it. Because by and of ourselves, not one of us is worthy of the kingdom of God. A few verses from what we read uh, already today, it says, um, uh, verse 11 of Ephesians 1, Furthermore, because we're united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance and makes everything work out according to his plan. God's good uh, God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance that he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. This inheritance is for everyone who believes. For everyone who has repented of their sins and accepted that Jesus Christ as Lord in their lives. In verse 5 it said, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. It was God's plan to adopt us into his family, and it gives him great pleasure. Luke 15 and 7 tells us of the great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. When we came to faith in Jesus Christ, all of heaven broke into a celebration. The biggest party you could ever imagine was thrown for you the day you became a child of God. The day that we gave our lives to Christ, we filled God's heart with pleasure. Sometimes when I look back, God getting me wasn't a bit, <laughs> was more trouble than it was worth. But to God, it brought God great pleasure. He rejoices over you. And he longs for you to share in his inheritance. <clears throat> Romans 8 and 15 says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we're his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of the glory of God. Folks, we don't have to somehow persuade God to love us. We don't have to somehow uh, beg or persuade God to, to bring us into his family. 
We don't have to uh, pretend to be perfect and lovable that God might reach out to us. No, the truth is this. God runs out to us. One of the songs that says, God runs after us. Pouring out his love. Even when we say, I don't want you. Still, God pursues us. Jesus was on the cross pouring out his warm, red lifeblood for you and for me, even while we were trampling it under our feet and didn't want to know. Still, he bled, and he bled, and he bled till he died for us. Jesus told the story of how the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes to find the one lost sheep. The one lost sheep. That was you. That was me. He left the 99 righteous and he, and he chased after me. And all those years from I was about five till I was 18, he chased after me, even when I didn't want to know him, even when I told him to go away and leave me alone. He chased after me. And God chases after you. And if you're not uh, saved today, if you're not come to faith in Christ today, God is chasing after you. He left in 99, he goes to find the one lost sheep because he longs to bring you into his family. Into his family. And to pour out on us our inheritance. That's God's pleasure. That's God's pleasure. I'm sure we have often seen and are played out and uh, some film or ch- children's films where you see the, the children in the children's home and they're waiting for a family waiting for someone to pick them to adopt them to take them home and you see it portrayed in the film they, they try to look their best they try to be their best that, so that they might get picked But folks, that's not what it was like for you and me. No, God didn't wait to see if we would try to be good or we would try to be nice. No, God broke the doors down. And he forced his way in to to come and to find you and to rescue you and to find me and to rescue me. He didn't wait to see how well we would behave or, or what we would be like. No, even when we were our very worst, he still chased after us. And he searched and he fought to find us even when we seemed to be the very worst. And he wants to sweep us up in his arms and make us his own holy children. His own holy children. Entitled to inherit the kingdom of God. Our salvation is is not... Our, sorry, our salvation is our response to God's love pursuing us. No matter how long we run, no matter how far we may run from him, still his love pursues us until we fall on our knees and receive his love. God's great pleasure was to adopt us into his family. What a glorious day that was. We can trust God because he has an inheritance for us. 
So what is this inheritance? Well, it's twofold. Verse 11 uh, and our passage can be interpreted in two ways, and both are right. Verse 11, it says, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. That's one meaning of that verse. The other meaning of that verse is, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have become God's inheritance. So we have received an inheritance from God, but we have also become God's inheritance. And firstly, we're his inheritance. God has reserved for himself a portion of all the peoples of the earth to be his special possession, his treasured possession, his chosen people. F.F. Bruce in his commentary believes the best rendering of the verse is that we are claimed as his portion. We are God's inheritance, his precious inheritance. We're his prized possession, the apple of his eye. For us he gave his son that we might become his sons and daughters, heirs to his kingdom. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But you're not like that, for you're a chosen people. You're royal priests. You're a holy nation. God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I meant to ask you a question before I started this morning. What is the most precious thing in the universe to God? What is the most precious thing in all of the universe to God? It's you. It's you. It's you, it's me. You are the most precious and prized possession that God has. And all the universe, the stars, the wonders of the heavens that are beyond what man can ever even uh, try to comprehend. You are his most prized possession. That's amazing. Huh? God, and in all that's going on in the world, his eye is on you. His eye is always on you. He never takes his eye off you. If uh, you've had a baby and, and your first child knows there's any difference in them all, and they give you them to take home from hospital and you bring them home and you put them in that wee bed thing. And you see, for many, many hours and many, many days, you never, ever take your eye off them. They're the center of your focus. You hear every move and every and movement and every word or noise that they make. That's why God feels about you this morning. That's how God feels about me. And the difference is, as a parent, you can get distracted. He's never distracted. He has that focus on you all of the time, and it brings him pleasure. He sees you, and you give him pleasure. His heart burns with pleasure. Because you're his child. Because you're his child. So we're his inheritance. Then there's our inheritance. We inherit salvation. Being saved from our sin. To be acquitted from all the wrong that we have done. To have all our sin washed away. And to be made pure and holy. No matter what we have done. When we're saved, we're made whiter than the snow. 
All the guilt, all the shame of the past washed away. What an inheritance. What an inheritance. Without God, have you ever tried to get rid of guilt and shame? It's impossible. It hangs on you all the time. But when we come to Christ, he comes and he washes it away. And you stand there totally and utterly and completely pure before him. What an inheritance. How amazing is that? Jesus bought for us freedom from sin's power, freedom from guilt, because he became the guilty one. Freedom from shame, because he took our shame. We inherit a standing before God of innocent, holy, pure, and true. Amen. People suffer so much because of the guilt and the shame that they carry. Yet Jesus came to set us free. Jesus came to set us free. I wonder, are you living in that freedom today? Are you embracing that inheritance that is yours in Christ? Then we also say we inherit a living, loving relationship with God. Based in total, unconditional love. A relationship with one who knows us completely and loves us totally. A relationship with one who is always available. A relationship with one who is always focused on us and our needs. A relationship with one, as we saw in past weeks, who only ever wants good for your life. When we become a child of God, we enter into that living, loving relationship. We also, we inherit eternal life. It says, whosoever believes in him will never die, but will have eternal life. John 5 and 24 says, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. John 10 and 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me, for my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else, and no one can snatch them from the Father's hand. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 says, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of the great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection of the dead has begun through another man. And just as everyone dies because we belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given a new life. Folks, we will live for all of eternity. That's our inheritance. That's our inheritance in Christ. We will live for all of eternity. But also, we inherit a new family. It's some inheritance, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not taking as long to read my will when I'm gone as it does to go through the inheritance that God has left for us. We inherit a new family, a family made up of people from every tribe, tongue, and nation. A family of the millions of children of God. We have brothers and sisters in every people of the whole world. Hallelujah. What a family. And amazing how the devil can make you feel on your own. (laughs) Like there's nobody else but you. You're all on your own. And yet we belong to an amazing family. A family that spans our world. A 
shared before, but I'm going to share it again. That one of the th- things that blew me away when I awoke from my coma was to hear that people were praying for me all over the world. I still can't comprehend that. I still can't understand how that could happen. People were praying in nation after nation. And the more I got to talk to people, and the more people said, oh, so-and-so was praying for you in, in, in America, and so-and-so was praying for you in Africa, and so-and-so. I just think, what? What? People I've never met, but people I look forward to meeting in heaven. I hope they come up and say, hey, I was praying for you. (laughs) And I'll understand their language because we'll all understand each other in heaven. I was praying for you. I still can't get my head around it. Who were these people? Oh, this is it. They were my family. They were my family. They were my brothers and sisters praying for me. I thank God that when I believed in him, he adopted me into this amazing family. And we think it's so far and so removed, but we're still one. Let's look what happened. People all over the world prayed for some wee man in Carluk that nobody ever heard a word of before. That's the family of God. He adopts us into this amazing family that spans the whole world. Hallelujah. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Then we will inherit a new heaven and a new earth. We'll inherit a new heaven and a new earth uh, where there's no sin, no brokenness, no sickness, no hunger, no poverty, no darkness, no separation, no death. A kingdom ruled by the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's not going to be some sort of fixer-upper. It's not that somehow God's going to take our old, messed up, broken world and patch it up and fix it up and, and say that'll do. No, he's making a new heaven and a new earth that have never been touched by all the brokenness of this world. Revelation 21 says this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. The one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. Everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty I will give freely from the springs of water of life. And all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings. And I will be their God. And they will be my children. And they will be my children. Folks, this is the end. That's the end of the story. And yet it's just the beginning. 
This is the beginning of eternity. Of what an eternity uh, when all of our family will enjoy the unsearchable riches of the wonder of all of God's creation. An eternity to worship our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We can trust God because of our inheritance. An inheritance is guaranteed in our passage, it says, and sealed for us by the Holy Spirit. It's not conditional. It's assured for us. It's not conditional on how well we run the race. Because none of us would inherit anything. But it's sealed for us by the Holy Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. It was bought for us with the blood of Christ. And nothing, nothing can take that away. It's sealed for us by the Holy Spirit. It's not conditional. It's assured uh, for us on the finished work of the cross. And it's sealed for us by the Spirit. And it's held for us by the Father. So trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. If you're watching this morning, if you're here this morning, uh, you've never stopped running You've been running away from God. Stop today. Let his love save your soul. As you humbly say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my running away from you. Please forgive my sin. And bring me into your family today. He is pursuing you. He has been pursuing you from the day you were born. And he will continue to pursue you till the day that you repent. Or the day that you die when it will be too late. I wonder, will you come? You come to him whose pleasure is to gather you into his family. Will you come to him and receive the inheritance that he has secured for you? As Christians today, let's burst and praise. Let's burst and praise. What a God. What a salvation. What an inheritance. And if God has uh, given us that inheritance, what are we worried about? What are we worried about? We can trust Him. Because it's already ours. It's already ours. And our response should be to burst with praise and worship like those that are gathered around the throne. We're going to listen to a song uh, this morning and then we're going to sing a song. And the worship team are going to lead us, and I'll come up uh, and we can, I'll read the words of the song before we, we sing it. But uh, let's just listen uh, to the song and just allow God uh, just to draw us close to Him and, and allow the words of the song to be the response of our hearts at what our amazing God and who He is. <laughs>